Hi, it's Anthony from carplaylife.com and in this video I will be looking at the new Vision V50 portable 1080p projector from WeWatch. So keep watching for my review. So over the last few years, portable projectors have really come into their own. Thanks to improved technology and smaller components, we can now enjoy LED projectors with decent specs whilst at a low entry price point. The WeWatch Vision V50 is one such low entry projector that I have for review today. In the box you get the projector itself, there's a small paper manual that tells you how to operate the projector and how to adjust it, and there is a small box consisting of a few accessories, including a remote, which requires two AAA batteries to operate it. You get a high speed HDMI cable, of around 1.5 meters in length. There is a figure of eight power cable to power the projector, and there is a AV lead that connects the projector to a composite output cable, should you have some old tech that needs connecting to. The V50 has a number of input ports that span along the left-hand side and rear of the casing. At the back, you have a single VGA input, and below that is where the power cable is connected. On the left hand side there is a full size SD card slot, a headphone 3.5 or AUX output port for audio. Next there is an AV input port to be used with the bundled AV cable. There are two HDMI ports and finally there is a USB-A input port for USB media or mobile phone connections. Underneath there are four small rubber feet to keep the projector stable and reduce vibrations that might emit from the speakers underneath. There are two screw holes underneath also, one for mounting on the ceiling and the other is for screwing in the single height adjustment foot to raise the projector further upwards. On the front of this we have the lens, an infrared receiver and a small WeWatch branding logo. Inside the projector we have a TFT LCD display that features a 1080p native resolution and it also supports 4K source material. It has a three glass lens that can throw a projection screen from 36 inches at just under six feet and up to a maximum of 200 inches. There is a manual focus lens with 15 degree of vertical keystone adjustment. Its light source is provided by an LED lamp with specs up to 5,000 lumens of brightness and an ANSI lumen value of 230 lumens. The lamp has a life of at least 40,000 hours and it has three modes of projection from the front, rear, and also upside down for mounting on the ceiling. On the top of the projector, you have a single manual focus dial and a vertical keystone adjustment dial further behind it. And lower down, there are a number of buttons to allow basic operation of the projector without the need of using the remote control. Software-wise, the V50 supports AirPlay, DLNA, and Miracast via its 5G Wi-Fi connection speed. It also has Bluetooth 5.1 support for audio playback, and there is a media menu and user interface to make it easy to connect to the various sources that this projector offers. Being labeled as a portable projector, I was surprised at the overall size of the V50. It measures 24 centimeters long by 19 centimeters wide and 10 centimeters high. It weighs 1.3 kilograms. So for some people this might seem portable, but for me, I've seen much smaller portable projectors. However, the majority of these don't display the amount of brightness that projectors of this size can offer. Unfortunately, with today's new way of consuming media, this projector doesn't carry the same level of internet connected smarts as some others do. So there's no way to connect to such things such as Google Play Store to download streaming apps such as Netflix, Apple TV Plus or Amazon Prime Video directly onto the projector. Instead, this projector will only display content that has either been fed into it via an HDMI or AV cable, media that's been added to an inserted SD card or USB drive, or streamed over Wi-Fi from a smartphone or tablet. Setting up the V5 is very simple. You just have to plug in the projector into a nearby power socket, choose your source type and connect it or insert it into the correct projector input port and power the projector on via the remote or its power button on the top of the casing. The lens has a convenient lens cover for it, which I found a little hard to remove at first, but I soon found that it simply just pulls off to remove it. When first booting up the V50, my first disappointment was that I thought this portable projector sounded rather loud. Using my Apple Watch, I recorded the silent room I was in at 30 decibels, 
And once the projector was powered up, this immediately increased up to just under 50 decibels. While sitting next to this projector, I found this level of fan noise a little too loud and distracting. And it would only become acceptable if I turned the projector's built-in volume high enough to drown out this fan noise. This fan noise may not be so bad if you locate the projector further away from your listening position, but due to this projector's positioning limitations, it will restrict where you can place this projector. First is that you have to place the projector no closer than just under six feet. So for small rooms, you are already limited on how far forward you can bring this projector towards your screen. Second is its keystone adjustment. This is my first projector that I've used that only offers vertical keystoning, which means that if you have to angle the projector anywhere to the left or right of the screen that it's projecting onto, you cannot adjust the lens to counter the warped angle. So you have to position the projector square onto the wall surface and only use the keystoning to adjust its vertical position. Once you have the projector correctly positioned and it's projecting its display onto a nearby surface or wall, you can appreciate the bright and clear projected image from the V50. However, I did have a little trouble getting the best clarity from this projector, and I think this is a fault of both its manual focus and keystone controls. Unfortunately, I just couldn't get everything in all four corners as sharp as I wanted to, and I really spent a lot of time trying to get one side sharp, and once achieving this, I would find the opposite side would be slightly blurry. Adjusting the keystone dial would make this matter even worse, as with a slight adjustment of this control would begin to blur the side that was in perfect focus. I guess for the casual viewer, once you put a movie on the wall, the focus might not be so important, but for me, who has quite a sharp eye, I could not unnotice this issue. With all that said, the projected display is very nice. It is definitely watchable in a low lit room with a great contrast and some natural color. I tried a number of input sources, including plugging in a iPad over HDMI, and ran apps such as Netflix, Disney Plus, and Amazon Prime, and all of which I had no problem watching, except for Netflix, which wasn't able to stream any audio when connected over HDMI. Connecting my iPhone via USB to lightning cable, I was able to play content from YouTube and my camera roll just fine, but with copyrighted apps, such as the majority of streaming apps, I wasn't able to display any video feed through this connection method other than just audio. I found the sound quality from this projector very decent, Nothing ground shaking, but action scenes and speech was punchy and clear enough to listen to. If you wanted, you could connect a 3.5 audio jack to a better speaker system for bigger room filling audio. But when I tried the Bluetooth audio on two Bluetooth speakers, one which was Bluetooth 4.0 and the other was 4.2, the audio had a significant delay to it. And on a pair of Bluetooth 5.0 headphones, the delay was still laggy enough for movie watching that I just generally wouldn't recommend it. Its main menu interface is fairly basic and it gives you a small level of basic functionality that this projector is capable of offering. Using either the top projector controls or the bundled remote, you can adjust the picture, which mainly involves adjusting color and projection modes. It's sound to adjust balance and levels of the built-in speaker and also connect to a Bluetooth enabled speaker. You can adjust the sleep timer, which will turn the projector off once it expires. And finally, there are some additional options to restore the projector's defaults, update its software over USB, and adjust how long the on-screen display will stay up for. With a USB media stick or SD card inserted, you can browse its content using the built-in file browser menu. Here you can select and playback movies, audio, photos, and text files. Yet I found the file browser a little awkward to use where selecting a piece of media would select it and preview it rather than play it immediately. The Wii Watch Vision V50 retails for $179.99 and it'll be on sale much cheaper at $89.99 next month. And you can check out my links in the description below to learn more and to buy yourself one. Overall, I'm a little disappointed with this projector. I guess I was a little spoiled by my last review of the Vankyo Go 300 portable projector, which was the size of a soda can. It could run Android apps and it ran fairly quiet at 43 decibels. But comparing both of them with its native 1080p resolution and a bright LED lamp, the V50 with its larger size did project a more striking and sharper image, but the cost of being heavier, bulkier, and a much louder projector overall. So if you're looking for a basic and fairly cheap projector, then at its lowest price, I would give the V50 some attention. But if you want some smarts and a much more portable projector, then I suggest you look elsewhere. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you found some value in this video. If you have, please leave us a like down below 
and let me know if you have any questions about the Vision V50 from WeWatch. You can check out all my other tech reviews up in the playlist on the top left. Hit the subscribe button down below to catch all my future content, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.